the cost of anxiety and phobia in North America is $47 billion. 25% of the population will experience some form of psychological problem at some point in time in their lives. Over 70% of the individuals who would benefit from going to see a psychologist never make the appointment. Right? There are three reasons for that. The first is the cost associated with going to see a psychologist. Here in New Brunswick, we're looking at about 150 bucks an hour. There's the stigma attached with going to see a psychologist. And there's also accessibility issues. So if you're in New Brunswick, in rural New Brunswick, it's hard to find a psychologist. But even in large centers, you can end up on a waiting list. So my research interests and the interests of my company, CyberPsych, which is a spin-off from my research, we're looking at methods of creating virtual environments right, that we can deliver online to help people overcome their anxieties and phobias. Okay. So about five years ago, I was involved in a CFI grant, a Canadian Foundation of Innovation. And we received $2.9 million to buy some really cool 3D equipment. And we used this technology to determine if we could create virtual environments to help people overcome anxieties and phobias, right? And uh, like I said, the equipment is very expensive. And I have access to a, a six-wall cave that's in Quebec. And in this cave, it's a completely immersive environment. You're surrounded by whichever environment that we can create on the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. You're wearing shutter glasses. And we can create objects in the middle of the room. And you can actually walk all the way around those 360 degrees and interact with those objects. Right? So we can spend a lot of money on some really cool technology that we know is really effective. Well, one day, I'm down in my dark lab in Kerstead Hall. And I'm thinking, this is really cool, but you know, we're not really helping anybody. Who can afford their own Star Trek holodeck in their house, right? <laughs> so I started thinking about different ways that I could take this technology out of my lab and into people's homes so that we could help them with these issues that we have with anxiety and phobia. So at first, I started looking at some uh, 3D video. So I actually went on eBay and I bought a used 3D lens and I hooked it up to a camera and I had a group of undergraduates come in and I filmed them and they were pretending they were watching a presentation. Right? So I filmed in 3D, then I had undergrads come in who had a fear of public speaking and they uh, viewed the video while they practiced public speaking and we found that it was very effective in helping them overcome their anxieties and phobias. So at that time I started thinking, hmm, what's a good way of getting this technology into people's houses? Maybe I could start a company, all right? So I'm taking the idea now from my lab and I'm turning it into a company. So I approached some business people. I'm all excited about this idea. And they sort of got it, but not really, right? So I didn't get any investment at that point in time, let's just say. So what I quickly realized was that I needed to take some time to build a product to show people what the vision was that I had in my mind. So I got a really small budget of only a few thousand dollars, and I thought about what will be the first product that I can create, and I, I decided to create a product for the fear of spiders, okay? Arachnophobia. So I created this product, and it's available right now in the App Store for iPhone or iPad. It's only $2.99 on the iPad, buck ninety-nine on the iPhone. Anyway. Let's have a look at it. So it should play here in a second. Yeah. There we go. OK, so remember, this product was built on a shoestring budget. OK, so what we're doing here is graduated exposure. At level one, we, want, we don't want to freak people out too much at level one. And we slowly increase the level of fear that's created by these different levels of exposure. So you can see the interface isn't that great. It's just text-based. 
here the user is learning about what is anxiety, how do we treat it, they're learning about some different relaxation techniques, and they're learning about exposure therapy, and they're going to expose themselves to the spiders. Okay. So in level one, we tell them what's going to happen, they need to know, we don't want to frighten them too much. So they're reminded about relaxation, and the task is just simply to walk up, open the door, and view the spider across the room. So anybody afraid of spiders? Okay, quite a few people. That's it. All right, so you're viewing the spider across the room. And if you're not afraid of spiders, you're thinking this is kind of a boring video game, right? <laughs> right? But if you're afraid of spiders, we actually get a very strong reaction from this. This is level two, and in this level here, people walked up, and you can see that the person, the developer, was a video game developer, so he automatically thought it'd be cool to add a hand in there. And I tested this on some undergrads in my lab, and I published a paper in uh, Games for Health based on this research, and None of the participants could make it past level two the first day. It was just, they were just too afraid. So level three, walk around the corner. Now, can you imagine if those spiders were walking around, <laughs> right, in your living room? So again, shoestring budget, quickly throwing things together, just to show that this idea works, right, and then we can help people. That's level three. It's creepy crawling around there in the... <laughs> level four, right? nobody likes the thought of having spiders in their bedrooms, right, while you're sleeping. Well, imagine if you saw this spider in your bedroom. Right? So it's about the size of a small dog, right? <laughs> and then in the last level, we're going to walk back to, and this is the highest fear-evoking level where you're actually going to have a, a bit of an interaction with the, the spider that's going to crawl on your hand. Right, so the very low budget, but this type of 3D, without using head-mounted displays, without using expensive caves, we were able to show that it's able to help people overcome their fears and anxieties, or in this case, uh, arachnophobia. So we'll just quickly have a look here. Right? And it's crawling onto his hand. <laughs> very slowly. Very, very scary, right? But if you look closely, it almost looks like it has a smiley face on it. But anyway. <laughs> Pause. Okay. So I bring this product to business people again. Now I've shown that I can take my idea from my lab, right? I can build a product, and I can take it to market. And we've sold about 90 copies of these on the App Store, just through passive sales, no advertising. Now people start to get interested. They're like, looking at me in a different light. Hmm, maybe this guy has something here. And somehow I'm able to convince some people who have some wealth that like to invest in new businesses in New Brunswick, somehow I convince them to invest in my company, CyberSec. All right? So now I've got some capital, and I can start looking at developing different types of tech or different types of environments that I think are very useful for individuals. So let's look at, at a couple of those examples now. The first product we're looking at this year, it's going to be available next week, is for a fear of dentists. Right? So how many people like going to the dentist? Right? There's always a few people who like going to the dentist. Right? So this is an actual copy of Andrea Regine's office, and she's on the north side. And the idea here is you're going to see and learn about the sights and sounds of the dentist office after you've learned some relaxation techniques. So the goal is to eventually get into the dental chair. So we can see here as we walk up to the chair, we can see the equipment, we can click on it, it'll zoom in, and we can learn about it and listen to it. Okay, so this is the number one sound that's associated with dental phobia, obviously, right? The sound of the drill. However, by pairing relaxation with exposure to this type of environment, you can overcome your fear. This is based on a wealth of research. Exposure therapy is the gold standard treatment for anybody who has a, an anxiety or a phobia. Okay. And the second product that we ha have available right now, oh, we won't get there right away. I forgot where I was. So how does it work, right? Let's have a look, just a quick look at the website. We'll have a look at how this technology works. So you can log in, right? you log into your account. 
launch your product. Let's say you're a dentist, you have your receptionist, she can log in, she can view the users, she can send out email invitations to try to help prepare these individuals before they come in to see the dentist. And we can also take part in therapy. And there are three steps. The first is psychoeducation. What is anxiety? How do we treat it? What is the fight or flight response? The second step are relaxation techniques. We learn how to relax properly. Then we're exposed to the environment like that dentist environment. So let's have a quick look at step one, just a piece of it. What is anxiety? Anxiety is something that everyone has experienced at some point in time in their lives. For example, it may be the nervousness you experience before a big exam, or the feeling you have before getting on a roller coaster. Anxiety can be useful when it motivates us to study harder, or to physically prepare us to deal with real danger. As humans, our nervous system is hardwired to respond to dangers or threats. So the information you're receiving is the same information fight response. that you would receive if you went to a psychologist, but it's delivered online in a much cheaper fashion. Okay. So the next step would be to learn some relaxation techniques, and we'll just quickly take a, just a little look at one of the relaxation techniques. Aggressive muscle techniques. relaxation. People with anxiety can become so familiar with feeling tense throughout the day that they often have difficulty understanding what it feels like to be relaxed. By practicing progressive muscle relaxation, known as PMR for short, you can teach your muscles to distinguish between being relaxed and tense. Okay, so we learn about relaxation. When we become good at relaxation, we're exposed to the environment. And we had a, a quick look at the uh, spider or the spider environment and also at the dental office environment. But we're looking at another product this year right, that's available right now. And my experience working with, with students at the university has been that a lot of students are afraid of public speaking. Right? They'll avoid certain courses even sometimes because they, have to, they know they have to public speak. So who, does anybody know where that is? Yeah, do you know which, which one though? The Wu Center. The Wu Center, right, exactly. So we've added some avatars in, in the Wu Center and they do nasty things while you're public speaking like laughing and someone's cell phone goes off. Someone comes in late. And these are the kinds of things that normally happen when we're speaking in public. So I might see, when I'm teaching a class, I might see people laughing, right? And I, I assume that they've made a joke between each other and they're not laughing at me. At least I don't really care if they are laughing at me. But for individuals who are afraid, this is a, a very scary situation. Right? How many of you guys would rather be up here where, where I am right now? Right. Oh, just a few hands were raised, okay? So this is one of the, a couple of the products that we're looking at this year. Right? We'll get some traction and then we're going to start looking at other products that are more closely related to, to other areas of clinical psychology. Right? So we're hoping to be able to create a situation where we can help as many people as possible conquer their fears. Thank you.